So welcome to On The Bank with Rivers, having one of my quick after work sessions, hence why I'm using the pole for speed. We probably have about 45 minutes. It's Friday, I need to get my fishing fix, and this is the quickest way I could do it. I think the canal now is no longer as The average size of these fish are yeah. brilliant, they all require the net. Number six will have to. Good perch. It was hold that dorsal fin up. She's in the net. <laughs> oh. Absolute clunker. And I would say this is the average size now on the canal. It's no longer a small water fishery. You need, you know, at least two, three pound line to deal with these. I think. The rarer fish now are actually, in fact, the small ones that you need the net for. You know, four fish out of five, the net's going under them. 18 barbless hooks, that's right now. Let's have a look at it. Lovely coloration. They can apparently make these stripes darker and lighter depending on whether they're distressed at all. So this one's quite chill. Beautiful dorsal fin here. The way to handle these, the way to handle these perch is to slide your hand over the back and then they won't spine you. But if they do, it's fine. It's, it's just a stick. I could catch these all day long. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the red fins on it. Let's see if we can get another. So, the baits I'm using, I believe this is called rhododendron worms. What I do is just take the tail off of one, and uh, it leaves kind of a hole. And I just go through that hole with the hook, almost threading the worm on. And as it's getting dark, a secret trick I like is to take a white maggot, slip that on too. you can see that. And I think in this murky water that just gives it a little pop of colour. And um, I think gone are the days that the canal is a small fish fishery. The average size of the fish is about a pound, pound and a half. So more times than not you actually need to slip the net under. I'm happy with that. I'm just fishing the back shelf, the bottom part of it, because the water's still cold. Um, the wind has been icy today in the rain. So really, just after work, I've come out. My house is 20 feet that way. I've got 45 minutes. We've already had two good perch and one roach. There's a good head of bream in here as well. And a few fishermen, a few local animals, anglers have told me there's a few secret chub in here must have come over from the river Cherwell behind me. I'm actually in Banbury right now. I believe this is this is the Oxford Canal. I think I'm, I'm we're away. Yep. And this is actually a small fish. No, it is. I might be able to swing this one in. Hopefully it's one of those skimmers. No, it's a nice roach. 
Absolutely beautiful fish. Hooks just come out in the net. Now I wonder if there's any hybrid in him. His, his mouth is level, so I don't think he's a mixture between bream and roach. I think this is a proper roach. But there's some good hybrids in here as well, and they fight very well. I mean, beautiful fish, you just can't complain. There's a lot of Xander fishermen that come up and down this canal. I think they do quite well. Oh. And I really think that that's... And we're in again. And that's a good fish this time. This might be one of those bream. That's a good fish this time. Oh, oh. So much fun on this pole, light elastic. Oh, this is a good fish. Please. Good way to that. Oh, oh. Pulling. Just hope that 18 hook holds. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, that's fishing place. That's a good fish. sitting on that back edge. The cars don't seem to bother them. It's about five o'clock, it's rush hour now. Just lost the best fish of the session. Try not to lose sleep over it, but I probably will. It took me about 20 minutes to get a bite. And now it's been a, a bite of chuck. I think the water still is, is pretty cold from last week. It's only about eight degrees today and the wind has been very cold. people are walking past and saying you must be mad. Of course they're absolutely right and bothered. But yeah, I think I've just lost one of those good green. I hope to show you one by the end. More hen just having a look. Oh! Definitely some fish in the area. Bait's okay, we're going right back in. This pole I got off the very famous virtual marketplace with face and the book in it. 30 pounds, you can't go wrong. Browning. I re elasticated my salve, make it a bit more sporting, so I've got a three pound main line to a two pound hook link. That should be enough to deal with most things. It makes it fun anyway. Move. If you're not getting bites, it's important to just keep moving the float every now and then to kind of represent the bait and bring it to their attention, their eye, the movement. Find it, you know, 30% of the time, if you give it a little move, she'll go. So it's just sitting up there, not happy with that. That's right. Now I'm going to look like a proper match fisherman. I'm going to try and get some maggot up there, one handed. Every time, just about four or five maggots. Every two minutes. Just to keep them interested. Interested. You really don't want to overfeed. If you're not getting bites, don't keep throwing food in because it's clearly just sitting there. There we go. Good fish, I love. Just going to check the rig and we'll show you. I'm almost embarrassed about this rig, but there's a car park behind me and the light spills out onto it, so I want a nice chunky float. 
size 18 hook on a two pound hook length and the majority of my shot is at the bottom because there's quite a big draft on the canal moving up and down so I want it to stick to the bottom and then I've just shut buttoned the rest of the shot up up to this not very attractive float but I can see it in the dark so I can, I can go until maybe half an hour after dark and um, something I've realized recently is that the perch will still feed and I, I had no idea about that so if you're on the bank and it gets dark definitely it's worth waiting just to see break off the tail thread the worm on it's just very naturally presented still can't believe I lost that fish <laughs> Three or four maggots going in. A few micro pellet, just a smell. And out we go. And I like to present the bait just after the feed's gone in. Because if anyone's missed any, they'll know it's coming. The thing about pole fishing is it gives you such accuracy. If you can imagine a pint glass out on that back bank there, every time I'm putting it in the same spot. And a rod and reel just it cannot compete with the accuracy of a pole. So when time isn't on your side, like tonight, you just get the rig out ready made, tip it on, and you're fishing within three, four minutes. Maybe give it a plumb up to see if it's gone up or down. And I'm actually fishing about two two inches over depth, just to counterbalance that draft. The float is moving around a little bit. Into a big fish here again, decent size. I hope I can show you this one. I used to pole fish so much when I was younger. It is really exciting stuff. Oh, come on. Come to it. It's a brilliant pitch. Oh, honestly, you just can't beat this. On a canal as well. Oh, that's a good fish. Come on. Come on. <laughs> wow and look at that absolute lump of a perch beautifully marked absolutely immaculate and that now is the average once you used to get gudgeon and now it slips out like that I mean, you just can't beat it. Let's see if we can get another. So I don't know if you can see, but it's just about to go dark now. Behind me, the car park lights are actually lighting my float. This is the absolute magic 10 minutes. This is if you were a roach fisherman, this would be, you know, I think we're in again here. I can't believe this, we are. Come on. <laughs> it's the magic 10 minutes, folks. The baits are okay. Another good fish. But what I've come to learn is the perch absolutely love 
about 20 minutes after the sun goes down which I, you know I'm sure a lot of you watching this will know this but I've discovered this over the last week because of course I can't fish when I get home from work because it's dark so I've come out here with a worm thinking you know maybe a bream or something is on the bottom smelling it but I'd say 60% of the fish have been perched it's really so there's a lorry just now it's not a glamorous fishing spot but it'll do and up again a lot of lift bikes that are lifting the float up it's normally associated with tench or something I don't know if, if it's because it's cold, but the perch aren't zooming away with the float like a normal perch bike is gone, you know. These are really gentle to the side. You've got to really read the float and kind of figure out what's going on down there. It's just fantastic sport. really in the last 10 minutes of life and this is it this is when the good fish come out or so I think but the fishing tonight just just in an hour session has been absolutely brilliant we've got three really good sized perch in the net I've lost two and a small bonus roach I'd love to show you one of these breeds because they fight differently in the canal. I think it might be because it's shallow and they haven't got anywhere else to go, but they, they fight well. It's normally in a big old reservoir or something. There's a couple of kicks and they're done and they're in the net. I think that's why people call them dinner plates. You know, it's like pulling up a, you've hooked a plate. Just moving the float there again, just to entice it. And there it goes, straight away. And we're in. That's another good fish. Staying deep there. Oh, it's good. Good fish. Another good fish. I'm going to add a single fish tonight that doesn't require the net. Just let the elastic do the work there. I wonder. It's another perch. It's another perch. This is absolutely incredible. Absolutely thin, perfect, beautiful. Look at the markings here. Beautiful red fins. Oh, easy. This one's had a few battle scars. Still perfect fish. Let's put him back. 